Will is in Columbia, South Carolina. What is the single best picture or video that is on the eye, Josh? Will, for the sake of remaining employed here myself, I'm going to stick to football. And it may very well be that the best video on my eye, Josh, sports or otherwise, is football. So before we play the video, because we're going to clip this little part for YouTube. Before I play the video, let me take you back. Uh, 2017 was the year, but before that, I had obviously grown up down in West Central Georgia, right there on the border of Alabama. So, you know, it's been weird. There's a weird dynamic. I think a lot of you get it now nationally, but back in the day, there was like this Cold War kind of between Alabama and Georgia. They didn't play a lot. There was just always this, this unspoken inferiority that residents of Georgia tried to cast upon residents of Alabama. And then for a long time, residents of Alabama said, we dominate you in football though. Look at our trophy case. Look how dusty yours is. And, and yet you didn't ever hardly get to solve it on the field. So 07 rolls around and Georgia goes into Tuscaloosa, beats him in overtime. That's Saban's first year. 08 rolls around and that was the blackout game where Saban and Alabama just body bagged Georgia in Athens. And that's really where the Alabama machine started to take off. So well, they played again in 2012, SEC Championship game, Instant Classic. 2015, I was at most of these games, was a very, very rainy game and a very, very ugly game for Georgia and Athens. 2017 is the next time they played. And by that point, I've gone from just an innocent Georgia youth watching on television, hoping I could one day afford a ticket, to being in the esteemed college football media. And that meant I got to stand on the sideline and watch it all unfold. The year is 2017. Jalen Hurts has taken Alabama to the brink of a championship, and Georgia, in Kirby Smart's second year, is in the way. The game is placed, out of all the cities it could be in, in the United States, in Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. If you were to ask me to script something 10 years prior, as just a normal fan down in the South, I couldn't have done it any better than that. Oh, except the game goes to overtime. And that's where we pick it up. We can roll the video now. Tua to Devontae Smith happens, second and 26. Alabama wins the title. Happens right in front of me. I grab the eye, Josh. Instinctively, I just jump in the dog pile. That's what ha it's what's happening right now. I'm walking you through it if you're listening on podcast. There's no professionalism on my part here. There's just a kid who grew up in the South, who loves college football, and who just saw undoubtedly the biggest play I'll ever see in my life, in person or on TV, and it's 10 yards from me. I just jump in the dog pile with the Alabama players, and fortunately, the I Josh was rolling the entire time. Now, you got to understand, I am what? I'm, I'm still, relative to a lot of the folks who cover the sport, very young when this is happening. Relative to a lot of folks who cover the sport, I'm very young now. But yet, I'm realizing, real time, it's not going to get better than this. Doesn't matter if you cover it another 50 years. Probably not going to get better than this. So you got to soak it in, soak it in, soak it in. Devontae Smith, probably our, our show's love affair with Devontae Smith really probably started that night. Let's be real. We ended up winning in the Heisman. We take, what would you say, Colin? We should take at least 30% credit for that Heisman. Uh, we don't take credit for the win that night. But that was a magical, memorable night. I also just remembered, let me see. Let me make sure I have my games right. So... No, no, never mind. That was the next year. I'm going to tell you the story, but, but hold on just a second. So that moment, I don't know how to describe it to you. Sure, it would be nice to have words, but I can't really describe what that is like to you. It doesn't matter if you're a Washington fan. Just imagine standing there knowing you've witnessed history and you, you have a vantage point the top 0.0001% of people on the planet have. What, what was there? Like three or four non non-Alabama players or staffers around, and you have an ESPN camera guy, you have some photogs around, and me, I'm in there. That's it. That, that's about it. So how in the world, out of all the folks who grew up wanting to do that, how in the world do I end up in that moment? I'm not sure, but uh, thankful every day that it happened that way. So now, let me tell you what happened the next year, <laughs> and I've got to pretty sufficiently throw someone under the bus in the process. Our friends down in New Orleans, maybe you would know a young lady by the name of Brooke Kirchhofer. Brooklyn to me, Brooke to you. We covered the SEC championship game the very next year. It's in the same building, same teams, rinse and repeat. 
And you'll probably remember that that game was in the final stages, like really, really late, and Bama won that one too. And it was a, it was a, like a Hail Mary. And I, you know what? It may have been the national title game. Forget which game it was. The point is, I'm already out on the field. If you're not on the field during the game, they make you wait in the tunnel. Like you're in media. They make you wait down the tunnel. It's a, a pretty ridiculous rule. Not sure what the purpose is, but they make you wait in the tunnel. You're not seeing what's happening. The final five minutes of the game, you're all assembled. You're herded like cattle into a tunnel, but you can't see. So think about the situation. It's second and 26. So they, they know the sack happened on first down. Then it's second and 26. You're, you're thinking there's a huge roar. It's far more likely Georgia just forced a turnover and won the game. If all you could do is hear the crowd, you wouldn't know. And so then, as soon as the play happens, pandemonium, and, and the cattle are unleashed, and so all the media run out onto the field, but they don't know who won because there's red confetti falling either way. So no one knows who won. So our girl, Brooke, runs up to the closest Georgia player she can find, and it's Rodrigo Blankenship, hot rod, to those familiar. And she starts asking him, what does this moment feel like? And luckily, Rodrigo Blankenship, the kicker for Georgia, is uh, a much classier individual than most. And so he simply said, no, no, not right now. And then all of a sudden, about that time, she looks up at the ribbon board and realizes that says Alabama just won the national championship. That says Alabama just won the title. What just happened? Is that white and red instead of black and red falling from the sky? Oh, no. Yeah, she ran up to a Georgia player after they had just lost the biggest game of their life and asked, hey, how does this feel? And luckily, it was Rodrigo Blankenship. So anyway, 50% chance she'll listen to this. I'm not going to tip her off. But uh, it, either way, she survived, and she's doing great work now. Guys, thanks for watching Late Kick. Make sure to leave a comment. I love interacting with you. But most of all, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. That's how we keep all of this free.